Holly was launched in uh, 1999. Um, at that point in time, Maxis had a postpaid plan and we decided when we launched prepaid after postpaid, we decided to create its own brand and we called it Hotlink. And in that time, um, Hotlink's always been um, one of the premium um, hot prepaid providers um, and it grew and the last five years has seen an exponential move towards how Hotlink has innovated and led the way that people have started to use data in Malaysia, um, at least prepaid users. So I think it was in 2013, late 2013, uh, maybe early 2014, when we launched our first real data-focused plan. It was called Hashtag Hotlink. Um, and what it did was actually, it actually allowed users to use data without worrying about the price that they were paying per usage of data. And let me explain this to you. We're all now very used to buying a pass, 1 GB or 2 GB or 3 GB. But in the old days, um, we used to charge for data even if you didn't buy a pass. So as long as your phone was using data in terms of downloads or uploads or stuff like that, we would use what we call a price per unit of data, which we used to calculate would come up to almost you know, 10,000 ringgit per GB. I mean, you know, it was based on a 50 KB or actually 50 MB um, um, price point, but it was still very expensive. When we started to do that, when we start to started what we call free basic internet, which means that no one actually paid beyond what they bought in the past, suddenly everyone started to turn on mobile data and mobile data became the way that people started to use data in Malaysia. And so they moved from hotspots and Wi-Fi to starting to use their phones uh, a lot more for mobile data. The second thing that we did with data users um, in the last five years was we realized that sometime in 2015, 2016, that with this amazing 4G network that we built, and on the first in Malaysia, we took an aggressive, aggressive stance to go out and build the first real, really good quality 4G network in Malaysia uh, with at least a scalable um, footprint. We also realized that people were starting to enjoy watching content and videos a lot more um, on their phones. So we, in, we introduced the first prepaid data plan that was specific for 4G users, and that was called Hotlink Fast. And again, Hotlink Fast basically said to our customers, there is a perceptible difference between using 3G and 4G. Come and try our 4G network, come and try this plan, and we'll give you free 4G during the weekends. And it took off again really successfully. So people started to find it very hard to move back to 3G when they were enjoying a 4G network because they were starting to consume a lot of videos, starting to do a lot of streaming, all the things that you are now very used to doing. So as this starts to evolve, and, and, and of course, you know, Hotlink has been at the innovative forefront of introducing all these different plans, and the competition then follows on, um, what's the next thing that we feel is going to be the way that people start to consume data? And we feel that people will start not consuming data in terms of GBs, but data in terms of what apps they use the most. Um, so if you look at your phone, you probably have, you know, some people have about 50, 60 different apps on their phone, um, but there are only really three or four apps that account for about 80 to 90% of your usage. So we feel that the future is about ensuring that people get a worry-free, limit, unlimited experience on the apps that they use the most, but with the options to choose and buy additional apps as and when they want to use those apps. Um, and that's the whole premise of what we identify now as the Hotlink Red Plan. Um, this change in strategy in terms of looking at a user and identifying what he uses on the internet rather than just selling him GBs has been. Um, you know, we've seen it in, in Vodafone Group, for example, they've moved to a segment strategy. They've also included these passes that are based on experiential passes, which means experience rather than GBs. Um, so it has been done. Um, I think we're probably one of the first um, in the regions to do it. Um, also because I think if you look at our customers, both on Hotlink and Maxis, our customers are quite sophisticated. Uh, I think Malaysians in general are very sophisticated in terms of their data usage. And we have those customers that are, are moving towards it. So yes, it has been done, but I think we're one of the first in the region to do it. Because I think if you look around the world, um, our consumers and, and, and people in general have moved away from seeing telcos as the destination to all these other services and apps as the destination. So people identify with Facebook community, identify with their WhatsApp um, group, um, they also identify with Instagram. They see that as a community. They, they're less and less identifying themselves 
as a hot link community. They identify themselves with many communities and that's changed over the last five years where the telcos are not really the communities anymore. So with that, we are saying, okay, so if, if we are not going to be the community, we should at least help our customers access these communities as easily as possible and as effectively as possible. So that's why now we're not talking about you know, product because the product means you're trying to create a community of your own, right? So we're trying to create a community, and we're trying to enable people to go onto these communities. So we're becoming much more segment-centric, people-centric. What is it you want as a youth? And it, it, is it content? Is it online um, purchasing? Is it, is it self-service through an app? What do you want as a family? Is it IoT services? Is it video? Is it home TV? So we start to identify with groups of people and how they want to interact with us rather than just saying buy our product and create a community around it. It is going to be... So someone, there's an article, I think The Economist said it, that data is the new oil, right? Um, basically, data will be the driver for creating value for anything that we do in the future, not just in telcos, right? Um, banks are going to use data much more effectively. I mean, you can already see how Google uses data really effectively, almost scarily effectively. Like, you know, it almost knows when I've had Chuck Wait, it's ridiculous. But, you know, that's, that's what... To be relevant, to be able to give your customer what they want, when they want it, you have to use data. And that's the only way to succeed in the future, is to be relevant to your customer. Oh yeah, uh, I, should, I should plug Hotlink more, I forgot to do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, our first, our first foray into it was, um, we launched this product, internally we call it the segment of one. And the reason we call it the segment of one is because each individual customer gets a specific product every day that identifies with the way that he uses data on our network. So commercially, we launched it as Hotlink Moo, but it's the first actual proposition in the Malaysian market that says to every customer, if you have the Hotlink um, Red app, that when you get on it in the morning, we give you five different offers, but that are relevant only to you. And it's been really, really successful. I mean, it's, it's growing significantly month on month but that just shows that once if you are relevant to a customer you can derive a lot more value than just going out and selling a cheap product it, it, you need to be able to sell the right customer the right product or the right service at the right time um, and that's all using data analytics so I mean you know it really is just the top two that we should talk about it's social media and streaming they come for like 70% of our total usage I mean, then there's, of course, you know, you've got things like WhatsApp and everything has connected, especially people who make a lot of WhatsApp calls. That's got a bit of use, but I mean, primarily social media and, 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 and streaming. It, it drives most of the 4G network. Why East Malaysian use? There's actually a direct correlation between fixed broadband penetration and mobile data usage. So if you are in a part of any part of the world that still has ADSL or copper, you cannot watch videos anymore, right? Because high quality videos is buffering all the time, right? So, and especially because mobile data pricing now is really quite cheap and gives customers a lot of data uh, for very cheap prices, people in East Malaysia where HSBB2 hasn't really now penetrated most of East Malaysia, it's still, it's still fairly nascent. Their appetite for data is huge. Mobile data is huge because it's not like they can go home and turn on their their Maxis fiber uh, internet line or whatever, they go home and they got, you know, ADSL. So they rather use their mobile data line to watch videos than to use the home, home fixed line. I mean, in terms of our 4G network, our first and most important priority, and I spoke to Aman about this before, was to ensure that people, as people use more and more data, we continue continuously expand the capacity of our network so that everyone enjoys a great experience. So the primary primary goal of our network is to ensure that everyone who is using our network now has an amazing experience. And, and we continuously win every single award from, from not just the regulators, but from independent parties in terms of being the best 4G network in Malaysia. Now, expanding the network in terms of 4G um, is, you know, we've, we've already covered most of Malaysia in terms of 4G. It's not so much about expanding the network, but expanding the capacity of the network that we feel is most important. Because as we launch products like this, which is worry-free and unlimited, people will use a lot more data. We have to make sure that we don't congest the network, like actually some of our competitors, and ensure that the experience that they're having 
is still as good as it's always been. So, digitalization is not so simple, right? It's not analog and digitalization. Digitalization also is not the new product. So, digitalization basically is the concept that in the future we feel that people will interact with us through a digital channel, which means that the app becomes the most important interactive mechanism for all our customers in the future. When you have an app, you can also then tell what customers are using, when they're using it, and how they're using it. So you can then start to use all that data to become a lot more relevant to them. Now, if you look at the products, the products are not, we're not becoming digital because of the products. Like I said before, the products become less important than the community. But if we have the capacity and the capability of doing this through a mobile app, then the products that we create also reflect that digitalization. And, and both Hotlink Red and Hotlink Flex gives customers the choice of buying any product that they want whenever they want because they can use an app to do it. Can you imagine how difficult it would be if they want to buy this pass, they have to call a call center or walk into a store. But now, they can just use the app and buy it whenever they want. So that's the whole part of the digitalization product. The product itself is an outcome of it. It's not the digitalization part. How do I persuade users to change? I think they're persuading themselves. If I look at the numbers of people walking into the store, I, I don't have to persuade anyone. That's why I'm sitting here looking at the camera. <laughs> okay. I think I think if you if you are a Hotlink or a Maxis user, and I hope one day, you know, I not hope like, I know with the products that you will be one day a Maxis or Hotlink user. Um, you know, we're trying to ensure that we create a product that identifies with you and is relevant to you. Um, and we're trying very hard by using data and using analytics and using the, the, the app and stuff like that. Um, so I think what you can expect from us is to have things like Hotlink Moo um, that are very relevant to you as an individual and that continue to give you the best possible experience on the best possible network. It's about the individuals, it's about you as a community rather than us as a product in the future. Okay.